welcome back dear friends welcome to my channel please subscribe to my channel for new videos let us see today's topic is hippocampal formation so hippocampal formation it is comprises indusium grisium and longitudinal striae gyrus fasciolaris dented gyrus hippocampus and it is consisting of carnu ammonis or ammonis horn and subiculum and the parts of uncus the hippocampal formation belongs to archipallial cortex and develops along the inferior medial surface of cerebral hemisphere so it is following the outer lip of c-shaped choroidal fissure backward growth of the carpus callosum invades the upper part of hippocampal formation and separates the latter into indusium grisium above and septum pellucidum below so eventually the hippocampal formation becomes vestigial in the upper part but in the lower part it grows prominently downwards and forwards within the temporal lobe with the growth of the temporal lobe and is ex expressed in the form of dented gyrus of the hippocampus so let us see what are what are all these things so where is the hippocampus is present and what is this fornix what is this dented gyrus these are all the structures we are going to study in this today's topic so let us see the, here we are seeing the medial surface of cerebral hemisphere and as well as the midbrain pons even we can identify the corpus callosum over here so this uh, hippocampus which is located in the inferior horn of lateral ventricle so the parts of the hippocampal formation the hippocampal formation comprising indusium grisium medial and lateral longitudinal striae uh, these are gyrus fasciolaris dented gyrus and hippocampus efferent projection fibers of hippocampus forms the alveus fimbriae and fornix so in the next class we are going to discuss about alveus i mean fornix we are going to discuss in the next class in today's class we are going to discuss about the hippocampus so first one we are going to discuss about is the indusium grisium so indusium grisium what is indusium grisium means it is a thin sheet of gray matter thin sheet of gray matter uh, and covers the outer outer convex surface of carpus callosum if it rest in front indusium grisium is continuous around the genu and rostrum of carpus callosum genu and rostrum of carpus callosum with the upper end of paraternal gyrus so here you can see that so it is just above the carpus callosum it is a thin sheet of gray matter which is extending and covering the superior surface of carpus callosum if it raised it anterior it is extending into the genu and the rostrum it is continuous around the genu and rostrum of carpus callosum within the upper end of paraternal gyrus here you can see just below this one is a paraternal gyrus okay so paraternal gyrus is also called as subcallosal gyrus subcallosal gyrus and uh, it is also subcallosal area around the sprenium behind posterior extension around the sprenium of corpus callosum the indusium is continuous with the gyrus fasciolaris gyrus fasciolaris and thence with the dentate gyrus dented gyrus okay, i will show you the dented gyrus in a few minutes okay so traced on each side right and left sides the indusium is continuous through the callosal sulcus so the callosal sulcus which is a sulcus it is present just above the carpus callosum that is a callosal sulcus okay so the callosal sulcus with the neocortex of the cingulate gyrus cingulate gyrus the substance of indusium grisium is traversed by a pairs of medial and lateral longitudinal stray okay so the medial and lateral longitudinal striae and the indusium grisium these two parts are the vestigial parts vestigial parts of the hippocampal formation one is indusium grisium and medial and lateral longitudinal striae these are the vestigial parts of hippocampal formation and let us discuss about the dentate gyrus now <clears throat> 
So the dented gyrus, it, is, it forms a narrow crenated strip of gray matter and extends longitudinally forward downward as a continuation of gyrus fasciolaris along the upper surface of the parahippocampal gyrus. Para, upper surface of parahippocampal gyrus. So here you can see that there is nothing but the dentate gyrus. So here you can see the yeah. So already I have seen the parahippocampal gyrus. Then on reaching the undersurface of uncus, on reaching the undersurface of uncus, the dentate gyrus turns abruptly backwards and medially, backwards and medially across the uncus as a smooth ridge known as the tail of dentate gyrus. Let me show you all these features once again. Here you can see that this is nothing but dentate gyrus. Here you can see that. So in this part, in this slide, we can see clearly this is nothing but the dentate gyrus and this is nothing but the parahippocampal gyrus. So on reaching the undersurface of uncus, this is the area called as uncus. On reaching the undersurface of uncus, the dentate gyrus abruptly turns backwards and medially. So in the next slide, I will show you. Here you can see that. Yeah. So assume it is a dentate gyrus. It is extending anteriorly and enters into the uncus. Beneath the uncus, we can identify that. And this, it is extending backwards and medially. And this upturned end of dentate gyrus is separating the uncus, separating the uncus into two parts. Okay, it divides the uncus into two parts anterior part and the posterior part anterior part is called as uncinate gyrus uncinate gyrus and posterior part is called as intralimbic gyrus intralimbic gyrus so below and laterally below and laterally the dented gyrus is related to the parahippocampal gyrus okay below and laterally it is related to the parahippocampal gyrus and is separated later by the hippocampal sulcus you can see this is nothing but the parahippocampal gyrus and between the dentate gyrus and the parahippocampal gyrus we can identify this is nothing but the hippocampal sulcus so that is about the dentate gyrus yeah here you can see uh, above the dentate gyrus above the dentate gyrus you can identify another circle sulcus called as fimbrio dentate sulcus fimbrio dentate sulcus Okay, so that fimbrio dentate sulcus, which is present between the dentate gyrus, dentate gyrus, and the fimbrio, fimbrio. Okay, what is fimbria? We'll study in a short time. Now, in this uh, coronal section, we can identify this particular part. We are going to take a section, and we are going to see clearly that is about the hippocampus. So the hippocampus, it presents an elongated prominent elevation along the floor of inferior horn of lateral ventricle. So the anterior end of hippocampus presents a bulbous extremity. Here you can see that. So it is extending into the floor of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. In this picture, we can identify the lateral ventricles and third ventricle even the fourth ventricle as well so the fourth ventricle is in a green color this blue color one c-shaped one that is nothing but the lateral ventricles two right and left lateral ventricles they are present in the corresponding cerebral hemisphere Th these two lateral ventricles they open into the third ventricle which is present medially through the interventricular foramen of Monroe and here you can see the cerebral aqueduct of Sylvius the third ventricle which is going to communicate with the fourth ventricle let us see the lateral ventricles briefly i will just explain you it is having anterior horn posterior horn inferior horn so anterior horn is present in the frontal lobe posterior horn is present in the occipital lobe inferior horn is present in the temporal lobe and the body of lateral ventricle which is present in the parietal lobe and as well as it is also extending into the posterior part of temporal lobe so this hippocampus is present at the it is present at the floor of floor of inferior horn of lateral ventricle now i am showing you with my pointer which is the location of the hippocampus okay 
So that is the location of the hippocampus and this in So here you can see clearly this is nothing but we have separated the lateral ventricles after doing the plastination. So here you can see the anterior end of the hippocampus. So the anterior end of hippocampus presents a bulbous extremity which is marked by number of grooves, number of oblique grooves. So the whole feature resembles like a pass of an animal pass of an animal. Hence, this is called as pes hippocampi. Pes hippocampi. Anterior end of the hippocampus. It is called as pes hippocampus. Then, so here, that's where we have seen the anterior end of the hippocampus. So, the hippocampus is nothing but a part of cerebral cortex, which is extending into the floor of the lateral ventricle, floor of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. Okay, so you don't need to get confused what's all about the hippocampus. Hippocampus is nothing but a, it's a part of cerebral cortex, part of cerebral cortex, area of cerebral cortex which has rolled into the floor of the inferior horn of lateral ventricle. Okay, so the ventricular surface of hippocampus, ventricular surface of hippocampus is covered, covered beneath the ependyma by a thin sheet of white matter called as alveus. Here you can see, try to observe here, so the head, so the ventricular surface, ventricular surface of the hippocampus is covered by the white matter. So the cell bodies are present in the head or head of the hippocampus and the white matter which is extending outside and covers the ventricular surface of the hippocampus, the white matter which is extending and covering the ventricular surface of hippocampus that is nothing but the alveus okay so alveus and which is formed mostly by the axons of pyramidal cells of hippocampus the fibers of alveus the fibers of alveus converge along the medial margin converge along the medial margin of hippocampus yes in this picture we can identify clearly so try to see clearly this is the white matter the axons of the pyramidal cells of the hippocampus which are covering the ventricular surface uh, then they are going to converge then going to converge along the medial margin of the hippocampus and forms fimbria of hippocampi fimbria of hippocampi so it is proceeding backwards backwards overlapping the dented gyrus overlapping the dented gyrus and on reaching the splenium of corpus callosum and continuous with the fornix. So try to see clearly. So this is nothing but here you can identify this of fornix. Okay, so it is proceeding backwards and overlapping the dented gyrus and on reaching the splenium of corpus callosum, it is continuous with the fornix. So the hippocampus is produced by a complex infolding of dented gyrus, carno ammonis, and subiculum. Carno ammonis and subiculum. So, all belonging to the archipallial cortex. Archipallial cortex. So, what is this uh, carno ammonis? Carno ammonis means the head of the, I mean, when you take a coronal section of the hippocampus, it appears like the horn of, horn of the ram. Horn of the ram. It is a C-shaped C part. C-shaped in outline resembles like the ram's horn. That's why it is called as Carnu Ammonis. So the Egyptian deity, it is the its horn, it appears in the same way as the hippocampus. That's why they named it like that. Then the subiculum. Subiculum is nothing but it is a transition zone between transition zone between three-layered archicortex, archicortex and six-layered neocortex. Okay, so it receives input from the hippocampus and projects through the fornix, through the fornix to the mammillary nuclei and anterior nucleus, anterior nucleus of thalamus. So that is nothing but the hippocampus, hippocampus. So moving to the next structure, connections. Connections of the hippocampus. I am just today's topic actually. I uh, am just explaining you only the input of input of the hippocampus. 
the output of hippocampus we'll discuss in the next class as the output is a bigger one the fornix i need to explain so i want to continue in the next class today is only we'll just discuss about the input of input of hippocampus so input of hippocampus so it is just have hand drawn this diagram here you can see the hippocampus here you can see the fornix and this is nothing but the mammillary body okay so let us discuss about the inputs so first of all, it is extending from the cingulate gyrus so here you can identify this cingulate gyrus from the cingulate gyrus one input is coming and extending into the hippocampus and next one is from the septal nuclei septal nuclei and extending into the hippocampus and third one coming from the commercial fibers commercial fibers uh, from the opposite side of the hippocampus it extends into the hippocampus via commissures of the fornix commissure of the fornix okay then profuse connections from the entorhinal area or parahippocampal gyrus by two separate routes i will show you the two routes here you can see this is the commissural fibers commissural fibers they come opposite side come opposite fibers they extends through the fornix commissure fornix commissure and then extends into the hippocampus like this okay then we're going to discuss about uh two routes two routes of from the entorhinal area or the parahippocampal gyrus so one route it is it is extending through the alveus converged margin of the alveus converged margin that is nothing but the fimbria fimbria through that fimbria of fimbria hippocampi through that fimbria of hippocampi some fibers are extending into the hippocampus another set of fibers they extends directly into the hippocampus so if we just observe this these two sets of fibers they appear in the x alphabet x alphabet okay so these are the two different pathways from where the entorhinal area from entorhinal area or from the parahippocampal gyrus the fibers extends into the hippocampus so that is about the hippocampus in the tomorrow's class we are going to discuss about the output of the hippocampus thank you